And we're back and we're moving into a new conversation at this time as we find out more about the celebration of World Maritime Day. This year's theme is Empowering Women in Maritime. And here to tell us more about it, we have Edmund Stain, who is uh, the Seafarers Manager at Imarbe. We have Stacey Swift, who is the Manager of Planning and Policy Development with Belize Port Authority. And on the end, we have Lieutenant Commander Gregory Saburanes, uh, who is representing the Belize Coast Guard. Good morning and Good morning. welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So World Maritime Day is actually going to be commemorated at the end of the week, but we're getting a head start on uh, the planning of the different activities you're having, and even more so why this day is important. And since we're talking about empowering women, we'll have uh, Stacey yes, start yes, off. Yes. <laughs> sure. All right, this day is especially important for us, especially in Belize. World Maritime Day is commemorated worldwide on the 26th of September. And we find it an uh, equal opportunity, especially in line with the team mm -hmm. in Pouring Women in Maritime Community. I represent Belize Port Authority. And so we want to sensitize the students, vocational, secondary, and tertiary, yeah. about the importance of the maritime system on a whole mm -hmm. and how we could incorporate maritime studies in the curriculum in Belize. So this empower us to, as a maritime agency in Marbella and Coast Guard and key agencies, to actually streamline the importance and actually empower our own officers in the maritime sector to educate the students. How visible are women in maritime? Well, if you look um, worldwide, I just um, read a report and it shows that 1 to 2 percent of females out of 1.2 million are seafarers. seafarers sorry. Mm -hmm. So it really showed that we need more women in the sector and yeah. that's why the International Maritime Organization which is a part of the United Nations Special Agency, has a Women in Maritime program that actually have training courses and fellowship that is de designated sorry, for women as well. Yeah. When we're looking at women in the maritime space, so to speak, we're looking at women serving in various capacities. Yes, so yeah. we're looking at perhaps uh, maritime law enforcement in the case of the Coast, Coast Guard. Guard. Yeah. We're looking at perhaps women in the fisheries sector and that sort of stuff. Would you yes. elaborate? Yes, um, there are many careers in the mm -hmm. maritime industry. Like I said, for Belize Port Authority, if we look at Port State Control Officers, mm -hmm. they are the ones that actually board these foreign ships that enter mm -hmm. our territorial waters. Mm -hmm. And the ratio right now, we have six Port State Control Officers, with three being females and three being males. Mm -hmm. We look at the Ports Commissioner, who is the Harbor Master. Um, mm -hmm. From since I've been at the Belize Port Authority since 2004, um, I could say that 2013 was the first female ports commissioner we ever had mm -hmm. at the Belize Port Authority. We also represent female on our board of directors, mm -hmm. that's a woman. Our CEO is a female mm -hmm. and we also have port inspectors who are females as well in our sector and seafarers. Yes. So we present a wide range of yeah. careers. Too. Mm -hmm. And perhaps in terms of visibility, we have seen uh, female representatives on the Belize Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, and, yeah. and, and it's true. I just want to reiterate what, what CSC is saying. Yeah. Um, the official World Maritime Report mm -hmm. clearly states that only 2% indeed okay. of mm -hmm. women are employed in the, in the um, maritime workforce. Mm -hmm. For us, we've, the, the, the Ministry of National Security, uh, along with Admiral Boland, has taken an initiative where um, we, we've really taken um, bold steps in highlighting the women um, in the maritime sector as it relates to security. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we have most recently, for example, um, Miss Lieutenant Alma Pinello, mm -hmm. who um, a few months yeah, ago shining came. Star. Yes, yeah. she she is she's a sign, she is a shining star for us yeah. um, as a female in the Coast Guard. She recently got, um, returned from the International Maritime Officer course, mm -hmm. where she was the first female undergrad. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a significant achievement. Yeah. Uh, earlier this year, we also had uh, another female, um, Melissa Jones, mm -hmm. who went to do what, we, what is called a Gunner's Mate course. And likewise, she was also the undergrad for that particular course. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Coast Guard is, is trained by the U.S. Marines, we do, they, they're in country doing training with the, the Coast Guard. Um, recently, we had a female who was the, the top student for one of those mm -hmm. cycles. So, um, we've really seen where, or, or, um, where the females have 
made significant achievements, yeah. uh, achievements within the organization. Um, but most recently, uh, I think which is, which is noteworthy is that the, the Coast Guard, um, for the very first time, mm -hmm. and it's a first even for the Ministry of National Security where we had an all-female officer selection. Wow. Nice. We've, that, has, that is unprecedented. We've wow. never had that before in the country of Belize. And, and so we, we um, the Admiral Boland, like I said, as, as a ministry directive and, mm -hmm. and, and initiative, yeah. um, had that all-female officer selection, which was very successful for us. So we've taken bold steps yeah. in, in empowering our females, yeah. um, giving them equal opportunity within the organization mm -hmm. for growth, development. And, and it's true, it's, 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 it's like what CSA is saying, it's yeah. more than just um, creating that awareness. Yeah. Um, it's moving to that, to, that, to that platform where it's a part of our education system. Mm -hmm. Because the blue economy is a significant um, contributor to the overall economics for the country of mm -hmm. Belize. Yeah. So it's, it's an important issue and it's something that we definitely want to highlight as we have this um, Maritime Day this Friday. How much of it do you think, you know, so oftentimes we have a perception um, or that we hang on to and we, we, we have a hard time breaking free of it, which is that some area, some sectors are more male dominated. They're meant yeah. for men, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I think sometimes that that is what happens. People feel that, oh, it's primarily men that work there. They'll only want to hire men. Mm -hmm. uh, are you finding more and more women interested in seeking careers in the maritime sector and breaking these particular uh, beliefs? Well, I mean, I think because of WeMap now mm -hmm. and the, the campaigns that they're doing and the fact that people are being educated and knowing mm -hmm. exactly what it's like, um, that, that really helps because a lot of females, they say, okay, going on a ship to work or or doing something on the sea, like they, 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 they don't see it as yeah. something that fits their character. Mm -hmm. But when you understand the, the moves that the IMO has been making recently, and, and the Maritime Labor Convention, seeing that the accommodations has to be worked out, mm -hmm. there's a lot of rights for everybody on board, and especially mm -hmm. more so for females. Yeah. They, they will see how good it is to be on board. You know, everything is changing, the whole world is evolving. So the work, mm -hmm. the maritime work is becoming much easier. Things are more sophisticated on board ships these days. And they have to provide different level of accommodation and amenities on mm -hmm. board. So now, more than ever, we want to advocate for females to, to go on ships. As a seafarers manager, I have to sign off on everybody's um, endorsement that goes to work on our ships that, that we have in Belize. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen any female from mm -hmm. since I've been endorsing. I think wow. I was there two years now. I haven't signed on to any certificate for any female working mm -hmm. on board or ship. female seafarer. So, yeah, so that, that's an issue for us. I mean, at, at our level, we're thinking of trying to see how we can create maritime training centers local. Mm -hmm. And a part of the big campaign will be to get females to train so we can put them on our ships to work. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the systems we need to create to facilitate the movement of, yeah. of the people. I just wanted to add that the International Maritime Organization, as I mentioned, has a woman in maritime program. Mm -hmm. And if we look back in 1988, um, females were not allowed to um, actually take part and um, go into universities. Mm -hmm. So 30, 30 years from now, we're seeing it a lot that women are actually training mm -hmm. and IMO offer fellowship to females. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud to say that one of our very own Port State Control Officer, Ricky Lambe right now, is pursuing her master's degree in maritime affairs nice. in Malmo, Sweden. Mm -hmm. And it, um, she's doing, that, doing it at the World Maritime University. So we really want to commend her mm -hmm. and we have her support. Yeah. Okay, yes. So women are making strides locally, but yes. clearly you have identified where uh, we can still do better. Yeah. Um, how do you, I mean, so if no one has applied for the Seafarers program, for example, how do you communicate the message when you put out a call to have people understand that you do want more women. I mean, that's why in events like these ones in World Maritime Day is very significant mm -hmm. for yeah. us because we want to really show the kids and we think that we have to go into the schools because mm -hmm. you know when you when you think about a career, I never thought that I would have been working on the sea or being a CFRS manager. When I was small I want to be a fireman. Mm -hmm. You know, I, next kids want to be police yeah. or you know, so mm -hmm. they, people don't have it as an option in their mind yeah. right now. And and that's why I, I'm so passionate about doing a project like that, getting the training schools here because the sector is such an infancy stage. I don't even want to call it that it's even mm -hmm. developed because there's so many professions that uh, that, that this that we need.
that we have to outsource. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we don't have any foundation in Belize where we train maritime lawyers, mar maritime auditors, maritime mm -hmm. surveyors, you know, maritime trainers. You know, there's a lot of things that are missing. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, so we have to create and create the system that facilitates mm -hmm. this because if a kid knew that if it be a maritime lawyer or maritime surveyor, I would be traveling all over the world and going on to ships and surveying mm -hmm. ships and living a lifestyle, getting salary that they want. Yeah. They, they, it, it would become an option in their mind, you know. Yeah. So if you know being a, being a seafarer, they have to fly you out from your country, give you all these benefits. Your, your family has to be safe. They pay you so much money. They fly you back in. Mm -hmm. if, if they know what it means to be a seafarer, I believe that more people will want to do it. So mm -hmm. having well, Martin Day and Miss Stacy came up with the idea to have the, the comp poster competition and video, comp you know, ah. these are things that would definitely cause the students to have to research. Yeah. So let let me ask, find out about it. Let so me ask this question quickly then. Listening to you, Edmund. Is it perhaps a situation where there has been poor sensitization in the past to have the public aware of what these careers are and what they entail? If you're saying that perhaps yeah. those options have not been made available to folks like myself, for mm -hmm. instance, growing yeah. up, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have known yeah. of that. Yeah. You know, perhaps it's a situation where enough wasn't done to be able to market mm -hmm. the availability of these types of. I think it's an evolution, you know, because. Mm -hmm. it, if you look at when the when port authority was started in, right, mm -hmm. 1989 was it was the first one. They had the port facility, and we just needed to have the ships come in, mm -hmm. and the IMO was pressuring us, so we had to make sure that we have an authority that look at the convention, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then port authority was far, and then afterwards the coast guard came along, and then it should have been at that point, with my view, mm -hmm. that there was a amalgamation really, because then the coast guard the coast guard functions kind of have some some if effect on the, the port authorities in yeah. that in that mm -hmm. sense. But because it they happens separate, mm -hmm. so now we're at a point now where everybody is creating their mandate, creating their policies, getting bigger, you know, expanding, you know, mm -hmm. and now it's a point where it's opening up. So mm -hmm. because they were building, because Port Authority is still building, and Marba is still building, Coast Guard is still building, at this point now we can look into other sections of the, of, of the mm -hmm. because first when we, when we opened up, it was just to respond to what's mandatory. Mm -hmm. yeah. Make sure that we have compliance in place, make sure we have law and order, make sure we have safety and security. Mm -hmm. But now we can open up the sector to where we have other things that may not be as, as, as strict, mm -hmm. you know, and then try to see how we can encourage other people to invest in it. So I believe it's a natural evolution process, and from now going forward, it will just be more information going out to the people yeah. and knowing what, what options are available. So the next generation, we have to make sure that the next generation gets this information so that they have it as an option, and that doesn't happen again. Yeah. I'm not sure I, that it wasn't this. Yeah, I, I think the, one of the key things so as well, um, and, and, and Stacey alluded to it, is the whole education aspect of mm -hmm. the maritime industry. Mm -hmm. um, while it's good to create that awareness, it must be implemented into our education system. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we are a coastal state. Mm -hmm. we, we are a country that conducts um, maritime trade. Mm -hmm. Much of our trade is conducted through, the, the, um, mar through marine transportation. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and, and, and it, is, it is imperative and important that or our education system is is expanding and extended to include the maritime education that CC is talking about. Mm -hmm. Because currently um, our young people are being corralled and streamlined into particular um, work or particular jobs. For example, mm -hmm. you are more corralled into working at the bank mm -hmm. or yeah. you're, you're, you're corralled into working in the... Yeah, so the education system, system mm -hmm. is limiting it, it, it's limit, it limits you and it corrals you in a particular direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we, we need to, to expand it, extend it where um, they are, they are um, exposed mm -hmm. to the whole maritime industry and the maritime domain. Like I said, the, the, the entire blue economy of Belize. Yeah. And so they can say, listen, yes, we do have opportunities to become maritime lawyers. Mm -hmm. We do have opportunities here to become a marine surveyor, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, but this is where it starts. Yes. Definitely. When we bring in the high schoolers, the, 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 the tertiary level students, and create that, begin to create that awareness, mm -hmm. and from there, um, see where, and construct a mechanism where um, it, it, we, we, we lobby for it to become a part of the overall system that our students are a part of. I just want to add we need more collaboration too with the different maritime agencies mm -hmm. and I for one Isani, um, I started to work at the Belize Port Authority in 2004. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what was the maritime career about. Mm -hmm. I just um, sent in my application and I got the call. This is my first job and I've been there for 15 years now so wow. it must be an amazing job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and what have, I mean, 
that's such a clear indication indicator of how well you fit within the system mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you've had your Maritime Day uh, celebrations before, you have open days, you have mm -hmm. this educational encounter. What's that aha moment that people have? They're watching and go, wow, I really didn't know that um, when they come around and see the booths. You're smiling. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tell me. It's a good Go story. It's a good. I, I think for us is that um, f from the get-go, people are not really aware of the number of females that we have yep. in the Coast Guard mm -hmm. um, and how strong they are. Um, uh, and, and so it really, it really enlightens them as really how so strong they are as in physically, physically strong, physically strong <laughs> and mentally yeah, strong okay. you know I, I mean just the 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 the, the, the individual as a, as a as a as a person in yes. mm -hmm. you know and and i think to see to see females do the things that they do uh, as members uh, of the security forces yeah. um, is always amazing to, to the young ladies who, who come around. Mm -hmm. um, for example, the Coast Guard has the Wonder Woman competition, yes. mm -hmm. yeah. that all female competition, yeah. where you really see great intestinal fortitude that the females demonstrate. And let me say that those females um, conduct the same activity that males do mm -hmm. when we have our best warrior competition. Mm -hmm. So, wow. I mean, it really demonstrates the strength of, yeah. of, the, of the woman and the female um, in, our, in our security services. And, and one of the things I'd, I'd like to highlight as well is that from the ministry perspective, mm -hmm. uh, as relates to the Ministry of National Security, um, we as a country were the first to implement certain initiatives when it comes to women for peace and uh, in security, mm -hmm. um, which is headed by Ms. Ria Rajas at the Ministry of National mm -hmm. Security, mm -hmm. supported by, we have, like I said, Alma, who, mm -hmm. who, who is a part of that initi initiative as well. Mm -hmm. um, so from the security perspective, we've, like I said, we've taken some bold initiatives and steps in empowering the women in the maritime domain. And I think as people come around to the, to the respective booths and they see how, how intricately involved the women are as relates to the overall growth and development of the organization, they are amazed and wowed nice. by, by, by that. And not to only empower women, we also want to empower young boys too as yeah. well because mm -hmm. we can't do it without the men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we want to also use this opportunity to do that as yeah. well. It's about a partnership. Mm -hmm. that, yes. That's what it is. Yes. Yes. So yes. other other moments that tend to wow uh, the children when they come around on <laughs> your <laughs> commemoration <laughs> days? Well, for, for us, it's, it's kind of different because people don't even know what the Marvel does. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> when, when they come in and say, oh, what do you guys do? We sort of explain to them how it works and, and how we mandated by IMO to enforce these conventions, how we register it. But how you register it that doesn't come to believe. And we have to explain to them how it works on a global scale and people are like, wow. Yeah. I didn't even know yeah. I didn't even know this is how it works. Right? I didn't even know how it works. On the other side of the world. Yeah, come yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 So, so why like, would they yeah. want to? Yeah, yeah. so like you have to explain to them it's a normal system. It happens yeah. everywhere. This yeah. is it's the, it's the way it works, you know. And, and that's just to add because um, our boss is a female. Yeah. So yeah. The, the, the Mrs. Garnet Garrell, she's a gem. Yeah. I mean, she's the yeah. person that yeah. knows how to run the ship and has a lot of vision, a lot of passion for what we do. And I just have to highlight her. Yeah. And we have a lot of females in our office. We barely have males working in the office, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And all these are we women, Ms. Sharon and, and Ms. Yeah. Lenny, and these are committed people that are yeah. very technical. You, you speak to them about anything maritime. They could run off until tomorrow mm -hmm. yeah. and just be on point, you know, speaking about what they do. So, I mean, and we are passionate people, and we know this is a this is an industry that can blow up and can be one of the biggest industries in Belize. There's a lot of coastal countries where the maritime sector is the biggest contributor to the GDP. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that, that's where Belize can go. We have a lot of coastline, a lot of things that we're not using, and I would love to see our country shift towards that and start exploiting the maritime sector. And we have the brains. I mean, the coast has a lot of intelligent people. We pull a lot of intelligent yeah. people. We have the brains to do it, but on a policy level. That's what we have to amalgamate yeah. and see how we can make it work together. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like it's a great opportunity to learn uh, about career paths, mm -hmm. yes. uh, career shifts if people are interested mm -hmm. on World Maritime Day itself. What are you doing uh, to commemorate? Well, first of all, we launched two competitions, mm -hmm. a poster competition to second and third form students. Um, on the team empowering gender equality in the sector. Yeah. We also launch a video competition too mm -hmm. that is geared towards tertiary students to actually 
give us more or less um, what it is that they think the maritime sector is about mm -hmm. and how we as uh, industry could get it incorporated in the studies in Belize. All right. And the deadline for those? Well, the deadline is tomorrow. Okay. Because mm -hmm. we want to actually announce it on the 4th right. of October. On the 4th. And then on the 4th, what are you having? We're having a day set aside um, to um, commemorate World Maritime Day. Yeah. We have the various agencies who are taking part in the exhibition booth, highlighting their organization and what it is they're doing and how they are contributing to the sector. Excellent. All right. Is it open to the public or just students? It's open to the public. All right. Where and when? It's at Belize Port Authority headquarters, okay. 10 o'clock on the 4th of October. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for coming in and telling us all about yes. the work that you do, the women you have involved, yes. and even more opportunities that exist for young Belizeans. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you and too. best of luck. Yes, thank thank you. You. We're going to go ahead and take that final break now, and when we come back, we'll have our wrap-up, so stay tuned. Mm -hmm.